So what's so special about Snowflake? I'm glad you asked. But first, a not so brief database family history. All right, so this is the family tree of DBs. You may not know there is one, but this is the family tree. So at the top, we've got the CODs, and we've got the three uncles, cousin Taylor, and then the three kids. All right, let's dive, dive right in. So databases age a little bit differently than humans do. So suspend reality for me a little bit. All right, these are the grandparents, the CODs. Grandma and Grandpa Cod. Born in the 1970s, low-key, professional, still working at age 90. <laughs> the database of the mainframe. So you're going to get to guess as we do this, okay? So which database is it? Any guesses? DB2? Close. DB2. All right. So then one of the first uh, databases of the mainframe. Um, one of the first to embrace SQL, and the one of the first to have MVCC. Now it's, it's still around, people, it's still in use. Columnar storage, high availability, clustering, uh, AI support, SQL, NoSQL, et cetera. So still in use for those of you who are not part of that ecosystem. All right, so these are the uncles. This is Uncle Larry. Everybody has that rich uncle, right? 1977. All right, we'll get to the personality in a minute. Claim to fame, the best relational database money can buy if you have a lot of money. All right. So imagine you combine this with something like that. <laughs> something like that. Listen, he's not a guy you want to owe money to, OK? Any guesses? Yeah. <laughs> All right, the red eye. All right. This is Uncle Billy, born in the 1980s. Personality, sweater vest, former encyclopedia salesman. This is really excited about computers now. All right, claim to fame, one of the most widely adopted databases with closely coupled reporting and BI. Any guesses on that one? Billy, nice. All right, one of my favorites. This is Uncle Burke. We think he was also born in the 80s, we're not sure. So timeless. He's that health and exercise enthusiast. He's aged like a fine wine. Truly open source. With almost all the benefits of a much younger database. All right, there's a hint in the picture. Any guesses? Yeah, nice. All right, also one of the first for MVCC. Really unique approach to write ahead logs, making streaming and clustering and point in time recovery much easier. Um, NoSQL data, like HStore, JSON, um, PG Crypto. All right, Cousin Taylor. Born in the 2010s. Personality, a child star. You know, like one of those ones on the Disney Channel. Claim to fame then, the most popular backend database of the internet. Think WordPress. Now, previously most popular database of the in internet. She started hanging out with the wrong crowd. <laughs> Any guesses which database is it? Yeah. Nice. All right. Now for the siblings. This is Jeff, born in the 2010s. Personality. He's strict. He's a little structured. Not the most flexible. Claim to fame. One of the first popular cloud data warehouses. Oh, there he is. So Jeff's, Jeff's working on his flexibility. He's doing a little bit of goat yoga there. All right, which database is it? This one's harder. Oh, that would have been a good one. Uh, Redshift. So not quite as flexible with some of the unstructured data types. Consistency on data loads is best. Still some server management required. All right, future Redshift ML, AI models. Um, and they still are adding new features and very much a viable, viable option. All right, this is Jake, 2010s. Here's a little hint, he's a cool guy. <laughs> Up on the latest trends, a few hidden talents. One of the first serverless, fully managed data warehouses in the cloud. Yes, there are still servers, just you don't have to manage them. 
Any guesses on that one? Which database? Ah, everyone did. BigQuery, all right. All right, serverless, really useful ML models, data sharing. Um, the future, you've got Google Vertex. This came out recently using LLM models with your BigQuery data. Um, summarize data, search data, do semantic analysis. All right, so this is Thea, born in the 2010s as well. Young and famous, yet somehow pretty mature. She's the kid your parents text you about with their latest accomplishments. You go to your grandparents' house, and there's like a news clipping on the refrigerator. She's that kid. But she's pretty cool, so you can't hate her. All right. Database of the modern data stack. Oh, there she is on a recent adventure. <laughs> Any guesses on this one? <laughs> Great. All right. So data management and storage. Uh, serverless with separate compute and storage available on all three major cloud platforms. Um, no cost, zero copy data cloning, which is awesome if you've ever had to move databases around. Um, and then some really cool unique features around un um, unstructured data, time travel, as well as data sharing. All right, so then at the Snowflake Summit this year announced a partnership with NVIDIA using LLMs, again, for that summarized data, search data, semantic, all the different things you can do with a chat GPT, but with your own curated data. Um, three other really cool things. Uh, Snowpark with Snowflake containers is going to be awesome. Think Docker containers, but in Snowflake. Um, Snow, Snowflake acquired Streamlit uh, about a year ago, so that's another really cool thing for their ecosystem, and then there will be like a marketplace app store. Um, so in summary, Snowflake integrates with everything. This is a couple years old, but that's the full data tooling landscape, and it's absurd. It's five times as big as it would have been you know, just a couple years ago. So just a couple examples. You've got DBT, Talon, Fivetran, um, ETL tools, uh, Census, High Touch on the reverse ETL. You've got your data science notebooks and your orchestration, like Airflow or Daxter. Um, your data quality and observability, Datafold, Metaplane, a lot, lot of different um, people in that space. And then governance and cataloging, here's a zoomed in version of that as well. All right, another, another piece here that seems small, but the self service sign up and pricing really worked well for me. I can't tell you how many databases I've worked with in the past where, I mean, the setup is just such a huge pain. So they actually took the, like, made it a SaaS app where you can set it up and you can use it however much you want and you can actually have an 86 cent bill for a month if you don't use it much. And then lastly, the native apps, um, Streamlit, Snowpark is another um, feature where you can run uh, Python or other code actually on the database engine with your database in Snowflake. Um, and then LLMs in their marketplace. You can see here there's, there's like a packaged app store where you can run apps on Snowflake. And then um, there's also a marketplace, which already has several hundred um, entrants. One more thing. So it's just the next evolution of the database, right? So you've got, if you recognize some of these names, you've got Boyce and Cod with the fathers of the modern relational database. You've got open source solutions like Postgres. Uh, MySQL that came along. Um, you've got Redshift, which is just a fork of Postgres originally. And you've got Snowflake, which ironically enough, two of the members of Oracle went and started Snowflake. So it's all interconnected. And um, my prediction for the future, it's going to be snowing for a while. All right. Thanks, guys.